sense. <laughs> Guys, let's not, let's not. <laughs> Guys, let's not. All right, I got three things I want to do today. Three things, all right? One, we're going to, I'm going to go over how to, Finalize that problem I showed you guys yesterday. Two, I'm going to introduce rotational inertia. And then three, I got a lab ready to go. We're probably not going to get all the way done. Um, but I do have the ramps. I'm going to show you how to. Have you guys used Go Motion before? Detectors? What? Did you say detectors? Detectors. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we could call them sectors. No. That'd be interesting for sure. Uh, so, first and foremost, what I'm going to do is show you guys how I solve the problem. Okay. I kind of went in around it the long way, but I made it work. Okay, so Oh, I didn't want to do that. Oh, but go back to sharing. Hi, is the button I wanted. All right, so checking out this problem. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right. So what you had to do was set torque one and torque two equal to each other. Okay. So when you set torque one and torque two equal to each other, I got rid of gravity, obviously, because Gravity is going to be the same in all of them. And sine of theta is just going to, sine of 90 is always going to be 1. Right? So that makes life a little easier. So when you set torque 1 and torque 2 equal to each other, all you have is the mass times the radius in meters is equal to the mass times radius in meters. And then you put it equal to one of them. Okay? So I just did, I chose M1, and I divided 0 0.12 onto the other side, and I got that. Okay? And then when you reduce that, M1 is equal to 1.5 times M2. Does that make sense? Kind of going over it pretty quick. Then what you can do is when you look at torque 3. So torque 3 was, I think, the meat. Meat was on that side. So torque 3 is equal to force R sine theta. Uh, then mass, so force of gravity, mass times gravity times R sine theta. Then when you plug in all your numbers, that had to be equal to the two masses, gravity again, times the radius on that side. So when you're trying to picture it, it looks something like that. And then down here was the two that we don't know. So, and then it was like there. So we... This, all of this had to equal all of that. And that's what that's representing. Okay? Then, from there, okay, from there, what you guys can do is eliminate gravity on both sides because it's going to be the same. 0.3 times 0.27 times 1 is 0 0.072. And that is equal to, once again, my mass is combined times 0 0.06. You follow it so far? It's kind of an extensive problem. Okay? Then, way over here, my 1.5 M2, what I can do, or M1, is you can plug it into that value. Okay? So 1.5 M2 plus M2 actually creates 2.5 M2s. Right? 2.5 M2 times 0 0.06 is equal to 0 0.72. That will help you solve for M2, right? So right here, this was my shortcut. That's the long way. This was my shortcut. 
0.72 is equal to 2.5 M2s times 0 0.06. And that helps you solve for M2. So your final answer for M2 should have been 0.48 kilograms. Okay. Knowing that, you can plug 0.48 into this, and that will give you 0.72 kilograms. Okay. And then to get the third mass, you have to plug it into this. All right. So FR sine theta is equal to all the masses on the left hand side times r sine theta, okay, and solving for m3. So a little complex, but doing the same steps over and over should have got you to the correct answer. How do we feel on it? Outstanding. You good? Ready to take a nap? Yeah. National nap day was like on Monday. What's today? Certified nurses? Certified nurses? There's madness nurses. Yeah, I definitely got that on my curriculum for my physical science classes. All right. So I'm going to introduce the equation to inertia real quick, and then we will get into our lab. Oh. Okay, so moment of inertia. Right, we all we already know inertia. Inertia is Newton's first law. We know it's uh, for every action, or an object in motion will stay in motion. Object at rest will stay at rest unless an outside force acts on it. Right? Okay. So we know inertia. So the moment of inertia is how the body's mass is distributed over a given space. Okay. How the mass is distributed over a given space. Okay. Hey, there's a trash one there. I wasn't really okay. looking at it. I wish you would have told me that ahead of time. <laughs> but we'll make do with what we got. I appreciate it. I was looking towards the paper, actually. So, inertia is equal to the sum of mass and the radius squared. Sum of the mass, radius squared. Okay. So mass is close to the axis, small amount of inertia, easy to start rotating. When it's farther away, it's harder to start rotating. Question. Was your uh, morning better than yesterday morning? Yeah. Oh, that was Wednesday morning. Oh, was that Wednesday? That was Wednesday. My morning. Was it better than Wednesday? Oh my gosh, night and day. <laughs> I woke up. I was able to watch the news a little bit. It's pretty good. All right. So. Oh, I've seen the news. Mario Kart is physically right. <laughs> <laughs> So when they ride that fast, why do they lean so far? So they don't go over and back. So they don't go. Right. So that's actually the risk a lot of people take when they actually drive on three wheelers. Right? When you drive on three wheelers, you have the a risk of actually flipping. Where on a two wheel motorcycle, you actually can turn with your bike because you it decreases the inertia. Okay. So if we check this out, torque is equal to the moment of inertia times angular motion, so times alpha. Okay. Torque. What? You know this whole chapter is about alpha omega. Yeah. Okay. So torque is equal to inertia times alpha. Okay, torque is equal to inertia times alpha, okay? And then the moment of inertia is a measure of an object's resistance, okay? Okay. 
Then we just got one more video to show. Then we'll get into our lab. We'll probably get half the lab done today. We'll probably do the other half tomorrow. Or Whoa. We'll do the other half on Monday. Okay. So the last video, a little flip in physics. Have you seen this guy before? Physics. You ever heard that before? I've never shown this guy. Oh, this guy's like a genius. He has creates clones of himself. Like you do? <laughs> and he does it a lot better, yeah. He does I it. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> you have any other videos to show? I mean, I do, but no. <laughs> This guy's cool. I like this guy. Little verbo ad here. Scientific called a rotational inertia demonstrator to demonstrate the concept of rotational inertia, or what is often called moments of inertia. sizes all mounted to the same axle. The axle has very little friction and for our demonstration purposes we are going to assume that it actually has zero friction. Notice the axle is the axis of rotation of the system and attached to the pulleys we have these four spokes and on those four spokes we have four masses which we can adjust the locations uh, remind me, Bobby, what is the equation for the rotational inertia of a system of particles? The moment of inertia or rotational inertia of a system of particles equals the sum of the quantity of the mass of each particle times the square of the distance each particle is from the axis of rotation. But that thing is not a system of particles, right? Well, I mean, the basic idea is that we can use the equation you just gave us for the rotational inertia. I love of the other two voices to understand what happens to the rotational inertia of the rotational inertia demonstrator when we make changes to it. Billy, what is the rotational form of Newton's second law? Net torque equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration, where both torque and angular acceleration are vectors. Okay, let's start with the four adjustable masses as close to the axis of rotation as possible. And let's suspend a 100 gram mass from the largest size pole. Observe what happens when I let go of the system. The torque caused by the hanging mass causes an angular acceleration of the system. Now, what will happen when I adjust the locations of the four masses such that they are farthest from the axis of rotation? Well, an increase or decrease? An increase or decrease. Well, will the angular acceleration of the new setup be increased, decreased, or will it remain the same? Moving the masses so they are farther from the axis of rotation will increase the R in the rotational inertia equation, and therefore increase the rotational inertia of the system. Assuming you leave the mass hanging the same, the torque should be about the same, then the rotational form of Newton's second law shows that when you increase the rotational inertia, the angular acceleration must decrease. Okay, let's see if that is correct. As you can see, moving the masses farther from the axis of rotation increases the rotational inertia of the system, which decreases the angular acceleration of the system. Mr. P, yes, Bob? Why are you making it so the four masses are always the same distance from the center? Well, that is a fair question. You can see I have rearranged the rotational inertia demonstrators, and both of these examples actually have no hanging mass from the pulleys. One has the masses equally spaced from the axis of rotation, and one has a single mass farther from the axis of rotation. Bo, how does this demonstrate your answer? Well, when the masses are equally spaced from the axis of rotation, it continues to rotate at what looks like a constant angular velocity. The other one does not. Oh, it's the center of mass. Right. When the masses are equally spaced from the axis of rotation, the center of mass of the system is at the axis of rotation. So because the R value in the torque equation for the force of gravity equals zero, the force of gravity does not cause a torque on the system. Sure, that means when the masses are not equally spaced from the axis of rotation, 
the center of mass of the system is displaced from the axis of rotation and the force of gravity causes a torque on the system, which is always angularly accelerating the center of mass of the system toward a point below the axis of rotation. That really complicates things. That is correct. Keeping the center of mass of the system at the axis of rotation of the system makes this a much easier situation to analyze and understand. Now let's get back to the original demonstrations. We have just done a demonstration with the 100 gram hanging mass on the largest sized pulley and all four adjustable masses far from the axis of rotation. Really, what if we now change the location of the strain so instead of being on the largest sized pulley, the 100 gram mass is hanging from the smallest size? All right, he goes on and on. Uh, so we don't have those here. That'd be pretty cool if we did it. What we got instead it is, so what? It is, it is quite, quite a little expensive. What we we do have though, our little uh, inertia wheel. That sounds important. Yeah, it's not. All right. So what you guys are going to do is you guys are going to build ramps. All right. So we've used the ramps before, right? Um, now I would recommend trying to not use my lab tables. I mean, they're kind of a little messy right now. I can clean them off if you want to use. So, but I do have tables over here, tables over there, table, like got plenty of, you could use this table. Um, but what you guys are going to do is we got four masks, right? We got four different balls, masses, all right? You are going to put them in di different variations. So you can put them all four in the center. All right, you can put all four on the outside. All right, a little bit like that. You can do do some weird arrangements. You can just take them all out and roll this down the ramp and see what happens. Okay, um, so we're going to analyze how different ways of rotational inertia. Now, how we're going to do that? How we're going to do that is what's called a go motion. Okay. So what you will have to do is you have to plug this into a Chromebook. Um, on tight, right? Plug it into a Chromebook, okay? And when you plug it into a Chromebook, you're going to pull up a program called Graphical Analysis. Okay? And honestly, today's probably just going to be some test runs. Maybe on Monday we'll do the final runs, okay? So you're going to pull up a program called Graphical Analysis. Where it will record how close you are to the machine. All right. It doesn't pick it up 100% of the time. It's pretty good. Um, but make sure it is on the sliding or rolling function. Pretty important. All right. Make sure it's on the rolling function. And then you can put it back down. So what it records, it actually has multiple graphs. So it has a distance time graph, and it also has a velocity time graph, which is pretty, pretty awesome, actually. It is acceleration. It tracks it, and it graphs it for us, OK? And we can alter how long each one takes. So let's see. I don't know if I can pull it up on my, my Dell. We'll see. We'll see. Just to give you an example. It works on your Chromebooks. All right. Let's see. And it makes a very clicky sound. Graphical analysis. So when it's actually running. All right. So if you guys want to go ahead and get in your groups, get, get a computer out. I'll show you how to use this. Can we do 
All right, so when you guys get to your Chromebooks, when you guys get to your Chromebooks, you will have to go to the Chrome Web Store. All right, click Launch App. Oh, you can hear it? Yeah. You got it working. Yeah. What you need? Duct tape or? 
Mine's almost done loading, guys. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, listen up real quick. Let's stop real quick. So once it once you load the graphical analysis app, this is what it should look like. This is what it should look like. Okay. So from here, all right, you should be able to hear a click. Okay, has a little ticking sound. Okay, then what you can do is down in this bottom left hand corner, you can adapt how long, how or what duration you want it to record. So if you want a five second duration, 10 second, if you want to record 30 seconds, it's kind of long. All right, it's only going to take a few seconds to roll down. So maybe you might want to adapt it, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds. Okay, maybe 10 seconds. Uh, and what interval? I'd say 20 samples a second is pretty good. I mean, that's up to you guys. All right. So if you look at this, you can click collect. Collect, get your data. If you go up here, this is just what you can view. If you want to view the two graphs, all right, so you got distance time, velocity time. If you want to see data tables, it provides data tables and how far objects are away. So you can see different things based on this. When you are ready to roll, what you can do is collect, and you can hear it gets a little larger. So I'm really close. My hand gets a little bit farther, 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 and it increases, and then it's done, okay? So from that, you can check your data. So you can go to the data table, analyze your how fast it's going. Pretty interesting. Okay, you can record your numbers and we'll be good to go. So that's how you want to run it. All right, we only have about 10 minutes. So if you guys want to just get some trial runs in, try it out. Uh, I do have. I do have a little web sheet that you guys can record on. Like I said, today, if you guys just want, today could be test runs. But if you guys want to go ahead and
I'm trying to think of a scenario where that happened. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice that. Uh, I was going to say somebody's wearing his uh, sandals. I know. <laughs> 